Eve was waiting. But she did not come alone. She came down from Shagun's car. Shagun was Eve's boyfriend. Yet, why was Nancy coming out of his car, linking hands with him? It suddenly dawned on Eve. The last thing she remembered was eating cookies baked by Nancy. As Eve's eyes lingered on Nancy and James, she felt a surge of resentment bubbling within her. Nancy, assuming Eve was a beggar, walked up to her as Eve maxed her emotions behind a polite smile as Nancy offered her money. You can use this to buy some food if you want, Nancy said with a sad smile before walking away with James into the restaurant. It took all of Eve's willpower not to strangle Nancy right then and there. With teary eyes, Eve returned to Olakunle, about the shaking with emotion. Did you not see your sister? Olakunle asked with concern as he held her in his arms, attempting to console her. After some time, Eve managed to explain to Olakunle about Nancy being with James and how she suspected Nancy of poisoning her. Olakunle was at a loss for words, but he suggested that Eve change her approach by getting closer to Nancy. He realized the importance of understanding why her own sister would betray her like that. And so, Eve decided to dress even more poorly and wait in Nancy's favorite spot. Help me please, Eve pleaded, grabbing onto Nancy's dress as it began to rain. You again? Nancy asked, surprised. A few hours later, Eve concocted a sub story about being an orphan struggling with her elder brother. Surprisingly, Nancy offered Eve and Olakunle employment as helpers in her father's house. After working with Chief Isime's family for a couple of weeks, Eve still had not found any evidence and was beginning to doubt her suspicions. She had grown closer to Nancy, who seemed to enjoy her company. Nancy always had this look in her eyes around Olakunle, whom Eve suspected she had developed feelings for. One day, as Eve finished serving Chief Isime's breakfast in the study and was walking past the hallway, she noticed a former room's door ajar. Curiosity getting the better of her, she walked in and found it untouched, exactly as she had left it. What are you doing here? An annoyed voice said behind her. Eve turned around to see James, her heart skipping a bit. She quickly improvised, claiming she saw a cockroach running. As Eve left the room, James called after her. You look familiar, he said. Have we met before, he asked. Eve denied it hastily, her mind raising with conflicting emotions as she rushed off. Seeing James up close made her heart flip in ways she couldn't put in words. How could she still love a cheat who is flirting with his dead girlfriend's sister? She must have interpreted her hate for love. She struggled as she planned to sneak into the room later to check. Something told her clues could be there. Hey, a raspy voice whispered into her ears. She turned around and smiled. Hey, Kunle, why were you just deep in thoughts? Oh, nothing. Just ran into James. James? He repeated. Did he come to see Nancy? Olakunle asked, sounding jealous. Eve laughed. Later that night, Eve snuck back into her room, determined to find any clue to her killer's identity. As she lifted her bed, a bottle rolled out, triggering a flood of memories from the night of her death. She remembered struggling with the cockroach infestation and using action, a chemical, to solve the problem. After which, she opened the bathroom tap to wash her hands and close the knob, which still had the chemicals with her clean hands, before eating Nancy's cookies. It dawned on her that she had accidentally poisoned herself. As Eve grappled with the realization that she had been her own killer, she struggled to come to terms with the truth, the weight of guilt and confusion threatened to suffocate her, as she lay on the floor of her room, sobbing uncontrollably, not scared if anyone would walk in and see her. Olakule found Eve in her room, his concern evident as he rushed to her side. What's wrong, Eve? What happened? He asked, his voice filled with worry. Eve struggled to compose herself, enough to explain, 
awards coming out in broken sobs. Through her tears, she managed to confess to Olakuli what she had discovered about her own death. Olakuli was stunned into silence, unable to comprehend the gravity of Eve's revelation. He held her close, offering what little comfort he could as Eve continued to cry. After what felt like an eternity, Eve's sobs began to subside, replaced by a heavy silence. She wiped away her tears and looked up at Olakunle with red puffy eyes. What do I do now, Kunle? She whispered. 